Hi, this is part three of the advanced rigging lesson and this time we're going to look at creating switch layers for a couple of different body parts. Now you already know how to do this with eyes and with a mouth. This time we're going to look at how you would go about doing this for the hands. You'll see that this is an incredibly effective way to work with hands on a character as opposed to drawing out a hand and then rigging all kinds of bones through each of the fingers and then trying to manipulate those to try to get different hand poses. That's cumbersome and is likely to end up looking awkward anyway. Now let's just say that my character starting out just has this one hand and part of the points on this hand are actually attached to the bone above it. So let me zoom in and I'll show you what I mean. Let me click on the hand if I can find it. All right, right here, these points are attached to this bone. And the rest of the points on the hand are attached to the bone right here in the hand. And so the reason for this is because then if I move the hand, all right, so the back end of it there is attached up here and it looks a little bit better like there's actually, you know, some flexibility in the wrist there. If at all possible, it's best if you can create your additional poses by making a copy of this vector layer and then moving points around because then you're going to stick with the same basic shape. And hands can be really tough to draw, but You'll see that in the classroom, in resources, I've provided a bunch of samples and you can even search the internet for more if you don't like any of the samples that are there in the classroom or if they just don't seem to fit with, you know, whatever character you're working with. But at least you get the general idea of the pose, even if the hands don't really look like the hands of your character. Now, I already do have a few hand poses for this character, but I'm going to show you the process that you would go through. So I'll ignore my other hand pose layers, and I'm going to start basically from scratch here. And with the hand um, layer activated, I'll click on Duplicate, and I'll give this another name, um, Hand Front um, Pointing Finger for example. And for the time being, I'll shut off the closed hand layer so that I don't get confused. And then I'm going to start manipulating this, um, and I'm going to do this very quickly, so it's not likely to look great, but uh, just so that you would get an idea about how to go about this and make adjustments based on something that um, that you're trying to work with from scratch. And I'm going to get rid of that curve there. Let's just call that good. We'll say, you know, perfect. So there's another pose already. Now I need to make sure that I bind the right points to the right bone. And so with this hand bone activated here, I'll click on bind points and make sure that um, all of these points, even if I added some new ones, are bound to that bone. And then I'll click up here, let me select this bone up here, and just make sure that these points here, the same points that were bound to that bone on my first hand, then I match that and I'll click on bind points and then I can test it to make sure I got it right you know so that looks pretty good I'll do one more really quickly so that you can see three of them in action okay so I'll take this one now and duplicate that and um, I'm just going to put um, open hand and again, I'll be making these adjustments so quickly that it's, it's going to look um, like a bit of a pitiful looking 
hand, I'd imagine, but yeah, I'm not even sure what um, what this is back here. Oh, I know, it's from the other hand. So let me turn that one off, yeah. So we'll say that this is great and this is uh, an open hand. And now again, just making sure that I get all of the points bound to the correct bone. And even though when I made the copy, it looks like all of that copied through, I'm, I'm just going to make sure. And then I'll click on this bone up here and then just select these points and click on bind points and then test. Okay. So that one's attached just fine as well. And now I'll put these into a switch folder. So in the layers palette, new layer, choose switch, and I can call this hand front. And then take those three hands and drag them in there. I guess I better turn on these two. All right. Close up that switch folder. And remember, you need to have the folder closed and click on your right mouse button in order to change poses for things that are in a switch folder. All right. So right away, I think you can see how convenient that could be. All right. You don't have to fumble around with having a bunch of bones in a hand, trying to make different uh, poses, say making a fist, having the hand pointing. You can just create for yourself a handful of different hand poses that when you need them, all you have to do is go over here to the hand switch folders and then just pick the one you want. Be sure that you test your switch folder to make sure that everything is going to move along with it. You may need to attach that folder to the hand bone, right? So let me go up to the top level of the bone for the character, and then I'll move the hand around and just make sure that everything's moving together. Now I've switched my character view a little bit and I've pulled out the hand that's in the back there so that you could see the hand poses I created for that hand. It's a little bit different, hand closed one and then facing another direction because there are times when the hand that's in the background is going to look as though it's turned a little different way. All right, and then I've got a hand relaxed pose and then I have another pointing and open. So you can have as many poses as you want in there. And in fact, you can create switch layers for just about everything on a character. You could have switch layers where they're wearing different clothing. You can have switch layers for different hair, different hair colors, um, a hat, you know, different accessories. You can have a bunch of different hats, for example. And in that switch folder, you might have as one of the layers, you'd have nothing. So that if you don't want your character wearing a hat, then you would choose the switch uh, layer for none, you know. So for your assignment, you need to add some additional switch layers. The eyes and the mouth don't count for that because you already have to have that. So you need to add switch layers for, say, either the hands or the feet or shoes. And of course, you're welcome to add more, like I said, if you want to add uh, accessories such as a hat or jewelry. There's one more thing that we'll add to your advanced rig, but I'll continue that in the next video.